All right, hello everyone, welcome back. This is my second module nine video. Just have a few more things I wanna go over and the other video was getting a bit long. All right, some things to know. Let me share my screen. All right, so some things to know. Energy and work both have units of joules. We talked about that in the last video. Um, the equation has W with a subscript NC. So that's work done by non-conservative forces. We're gonna get more into this in a little bit, but you need to know which forces are conservative and which forces are non-conservative. The easiest way is to memorize all of the conservative forces that you could possibly see in physics 111. So that's the force of gravity, also known as the weight, has the symbols either FG or MG or lowercase w. Any of those represent the force of gravity. And then the other force is the spring force. If it's either of those forces, it's conservative. If you're in physics 111 and it's not one of those forces, it is non-conservative. That is how you tell if a force is conservative or non-conservative. If it's gravity or spring, okay? And remember, weight is the same as the force of gravity. It's conservative. If it's not one of those two forces, then it is non-conservative. All right, finally, remember, as complicated as this equation looks, You'll see it in a moment. It's initial quantity, initial energy, plus the change, which is represented by the term WNC is equal to the final, final amount of energy. All right, so there's that equation, fairly simple looking, but then, oh my gosh, it just went to seven terms, but it's okay. This is just the initial energy. We talked about this last time, how there's these three different parts with respect to the skateboarder, as our example, we went through several different states, I think six different states. Um, then you've got the WNC term, and then you've got the final state, okay? Now, even though that looks complicated and it's seven terms, it's gonna be okay. Um, I will write it in a slightly busier looking way, perhaps, uh, but this is a way where a lot of students actually uh, thrive by, by using this or benefit, I should say, by, by using this form of it. And this is on your equation sheet. This form is on there, this form is on there, and the connection as far as this equals this and this equals this, all of that's on your equation sheet. So please stop the video, pause the video now, take a look at your equation sheet, come back, unpause. All right, got your equation sheet. Did you find these two equations? Good, all right. Now, a lot of times there will be several of these terms that will be equal to zero, which makes the equation and the, the math, the number crunching on your calculator easier. All right, so that's just showing you those definitions. All right, again, just that same message that I gave you on the last slide. All right, this is a repeat from the last video, just reminding you these are important questions to ask yourself and you're gonna ask it about the initial, okay? Is the object above my reference height at the beginning? Is the object above the reference height at the end? Okay, if the answer is no, you get to cross out whichever one you're talking about, okay? Another way to say it is the height, the initial height. Is the initial height zero? If it is, you get rid of this. If the initial height zero or final height zero, it is, then you get rid of that. Is there a compressed or stretched spring, okay? If not, you can get rid of this for initial or this for final, depending on which one you were asking about. You wanna ask both questions. And then, is it moving, okay? If the answer is no, if it's not moving at the beginning, you get rid of this, cross it out, or this one. And then same thing at the end, if it's not moving, then it doesn't have any kinetic energy at the end, okay? Take some practice, but once it clicks into place, really a great way to analyze problems, okay? And you can use either this seven term equation or this seven term equation, but I do want you writing the entire seven term equation each time, unless it's in module nine and, well, no, I won't even say that. If there are no springs in the problem, in the scenario at all, then you can use a five term version of this, which just gets rid of the spring term. So this is not there, this is not there, or, or this, this, okay? But I want you starting with the big one and then narrowing it down. 
Okay, I want to see you starting with the equation on the equation sheet with the exception of possibly the spring terms, but there has to be no springs in the scenario if you're going to start with the five term version. All right, here is a sample problem from your note packet, and there's a separate video on how to solve this, so we're not going to go through the whole thing. Here's one of the equations that we're going to use over and over and over again, so I put that in there, and the artillery shell is launched vertically upward from a cannon at ground level, and let's draw a little picture in here. So it goes up like that. My initial is right after the cannon is launched and final is when it's at the peak. So my initial velocity, VI, that's 320, uh, oops, 20, sorry, 320 meters per second. And let's see at the peak, my final velocity is zero. And my final height and my initial height, let's put those in there, H sub I, H sub F. All right, well, we need to have a reference height before we can define our height. So let's make the launch height, our dashed line here. Sorry, it's a little bit messy. I'm not great at drawing with this mouse, but that is gonna be our reference height, or we could call that the place where P E sub G equals zero. So that means at the beginning, that's this dot right here kind of got covered up. The height is zero. This dot is zero meters above this line. And then up here, this is unknown. In fact, that's what we're trying to find. We're trying to find H sub F. Okay, so there's no springs present, so I can get rid of those right away. I look here, the initial height is zero, so there's no gravitational potential energy initially. It does have kinetic energy. Uh, we'll get to this later on. Um, does it have gravitational potential energy at the end? I don't know. Is this height, is this higher than the dashed line? Absolutely. So yes. Does it have kinetic energy? No, it's not moving. It's not moving at that instant at the peak. So we get rid of that. And so now we're left with either two or three terms. And let's, let's talk about this work by non-conservative forces. Let's draw a free body diagram for this. The free body diagram I'll label because we, now we could draw a work diagram as well, but we're gonna first draw a free body diagram. Uh, we're ignoring air resistance. And so the only force acting is the weight. Okay, it's after launch. It's already going 320 uh, meters per second. So it's not, it's not while something is pushing it to cause it to get into motion, but after something has already gotten it into motion. And so there's not the pushing force anymore. That happened in the past. And so between the initial and final states all along there, the only force acting is the force of gravity. And this is a conservative force. So there are not any non-conservative forces acting. And so that means that is zero. And a lot of times I'll just, I'll draw these as an arrow with a, a zero, a zero at the end of it, or you can just cross them out. That works as well. So we're simplified down to just these two terms. The initial kinetic energy equals the final gravitational potential energy, which we could write as one half M B I squared equals, that's, that's supposed to be a two, equals M G H F. All right. And then on our energy bar chart at the beginning, it has kinetic energy, some amount. None of this, none of this. Okay, and that's the, that's the initial, okay? And then this part, this is the change, remember? Uh, okay, and then the final. So the, the change is zero. Remember we decided that was zero there. Kinetic energy at the top is zero. Gravitational potential energy, it has some. And then spring potential, it has 
zero. How much gravitational potential energy? Well, has to be equal because, well, what really has to be equal is the left side of the equation has to be equal to the right side of the equation because these four things are these four things and it's in an equation. And these three are on the right side. So three plus zero plus zero plus zero is three and zero plus three plus zero is also three. They have to add up. All right, so there's one example. Again, there's a separate video showing you how to solve it in more detail. This is a conceptual look at it. Here is a similar problem, except the shell was launched like this. So it goes in a parabolic arc. You're like, oh, where's initial and final? Is this initial and this is final? Well, no, because it asks how high will it go? So that's not going to be our final. Okay, our final is going to be right at the peak. What's the highest it could possibly go? H sub F. Just like last time, we're trying to find out how high it could go relative to some reference height. Okay, so that's our reference height. That's where PE sub G equals zero. And initially we have VI equals 320 meters per second, just like last time. And H sub I equals zero. We're defining the starting point to be the same as the height where the gravitational potential energy is zero. Now, is the velocity equal to zero at the peak? Well, remember, this is two-dimensional motion, so it has an X component and a Y component. The X component is never zero for 2D motion. The Y component is zero, but this is not equal to zero, okay? Okay, it's not zero. I don't, I don't know what it is, like I can easily calculate it and the other video will show you how to do that, but it is not zero, okay? So we look in here, we've got just this term left on the left side, and then on the right side, we have this term and this term left. So when we go to do this, if we use the same scale as the last time, looking at our bar chart, the left side is the same, but then over here, it's still going to have some kinetic energy when it's at its peak. And then this one, plus this one, this is now one high and this is two high on whatever arbitrary scale this is, such that three plus zero plus zero plus zero adds up to three and one plus two plus zero also adds up to three. So the total of this is three, the total of this is three. Now you didn't have to use that. You could have drawn this first one to be four or five or whatever, but the total of all these has to add up to the total of all these. So that gives you a start on understanding a couple of different related problems. And I hope that you enjoy this module, but again, you're not gonna enjoy it until you get better at it. So. Get in there and do some practice in the note packet. Don't just copy down the solutions from the note packet videos. Try them yourself and then watch just as much of the video as you need to to get a, a boost if you need a boost at all. And then either way at the end, check your answers by watching the full video. Don't just fast forward to the end, get you into trouble. All right, you'll gain a lot more from it by doing them yourself first. Use the videos just minimally uh, to get you unstuck. And then at the end, watch the whole video and make sure you didn't miss anything that you understand it fully. All right, that's it for this one. As always, I am more than happy to meet with you in office hours. And those are the scheduled ones or just the ones where you're like, hey, can you meet now? Or could you meet sometime today or sometime tomorrow? This is when I'm available and we'll find a time that works for both of us. All right, hope to see you soon.